Hello my creatives and welcome to another video. So I when I post this I already published my first video but I haven't published it at the moment that I'm filming this so I don't know how that went but in that first video I made this one together with you this pocket and I shared that I already made a couple more and that I want to use these for snail mail. I forgot to mention that I want to write the recipient's name here. So <laughs> That is why there is this blank space, so I can put the name of the recipient over here. Um, because I like to do that with my snail mail. But today we are going to create some very basic envelopes to put inside this pocket. So I already made a few, but I will share with you how I create them. Uh, so they are just from book pages and um, I want to add them in this pocket and I am going to add my letter, I think, inside this. Um, but of course I will not add them like this. I will <laughs> decorate them uh, because I also like that this is a goodie on its own for the recipient. So what am I going to use today? So we're going to make these envelopes. And I think then the video is long enough because, well, like I said in the previous video, I don't do this real-time thing or usually. So I think just making this envelope and decorating them is enough time, I guess. Uh, yeah, so what we need is a book page. Uh, these are stuck together, but if you have loose ones, it, it's also fine. Because uh, what we need is that we stick them together to make give them a little bit more sturdiness. So here is that horrible glue stick again, I hope. It's done soon. So I have some more ideas for um, more videos and projects. So I'm very excited. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I hope it stays, I don't know, but uh, we will see. And I also hope that you will enjoy the first video that I made. Okay, so this is it. We stick them together and then we have to make two folds. That's it. Uh, so I have this as my template because, well, I already fold one. But this is the envelope. So what I do is I put it on its side and I will fold. Also, I don't wait before it's dry because I am impatient. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you fold them because it's, it will be your size, but I would like to have them somewhat similar. So this first flap is, I don't know, how many inches? Where's my ruler? Oh, my ruler. This first flap is, let's see, three, three and a half, no, yes, three and a half inches. I fold it on three and a half. Now, that's the first fold. Then the second fold, the most important thing is that you leave a little bit of space here. So you don't fold it right up to this, uh, but leave a little bit of space. And so everything can move in and out properly. And that is how I fold mine. Um, this is the base. <laughs> And uh, next thing what we do is we cut off these corners. Now I have already cut these, so I'm going to use this as my mark. But what you would do is just cut a corner and then take this corner and flip it and put it on the other side. But I will use the envelope that I already made as my template because I know I like the corners like this. And do just snip. And if it's a bit crooked, it doesn't really matter. It's handmade. You can use this for your junk journal, other projects. It doesn't really matter. So that is our envelope. And then it is time to do some inking. I'm going to use Distress Oxide Walnut Stain. And I'm going to ink everything. Uh, like I do. So I will just ink this and then I will be back sharing uh, how we continue this envelope thingy. 
Now my envelope is completely inked up and I hope you weren't scared because of the sewing because you don't need the sewing to make this envelope. Um, all you need to do is, if you are not going to sew, all you need to do is put glue on these two sides, put it shut and then you have your envelope. If you want to have this look, you can do the doodly border like I did, just draw in with a fine liner borders um, and make them look like stitches. I just, you know, how I did the doodly border. You can also do that on the flap. I'm going to stitch this uh, because like I said in the previous video, I have a sewing machine. I already did some stitching, so I'm going to continue that. Um, and that means that I'm going to put it on my, sh my machine like this and I'm going to start sewing here and sew all around. And I will do that twice to get this messy border. After I did that, I will be back and we will decorate our envelopes. I have sewn my envelope like this, so now it is shut and uh, it's time for me to decorate. So I'm going to decorate these four because I have these four pockets and of course I will keep in mind which color scheme my pocket is having but I do have some uh, basic things I want to add to all of them so first of all I want to use this Tim Holtz stamp it's called faded type and I'm going to use uh, this one because I am going to take ooh, which color yeah, archival ink coffee and I will stamp, so I need a little paper underneath. I will stamp here on this side, I will stamp here and probably here. So first let's ink the stamp. I am not using a stamping block because I don't want to have a perfect impression. I just want this for the texture that it will give me. Um, okay, for me it's better to stamp like this. Um, so yeah, love it. Then I'm also going to use this on this side, mm, about here. Perfect. Turning it around. I think that's the beauty with stamping like this, if you use it as a uh, background thingy. It doesn't have to look perfect because that makes it perfect. It's also the thing with if you create vintage style or distress styled um, ephemera, it all looks intentional <laughs> and uh, like you were supposed to misprint or not completely stamp it like that. So that is why I also love this style. You can never go wrong with it. I'm also going to add this on the inside. So do I want to add a bit more off stamping? Because there's always a, a bit of ink left on the stamp. And sometimes that makes for a really nice look. Um, because it's not as intense as the first impression. I like it. Okay, I am going to do this for all of my envelopes and then uh, we will continue our decorating. I stamped all of the four envelopes. So they are ready for decorating. So let's take the first one. Uh, so I wanted to add these bigger flashcards. Um, I have Friends, Vintage, Dream and Wonder. Um, so I wanted to add these here. Um, let's work this out. <laughs> Can I do all four at once and you can still see them? I don't know. Let's see if I can do that. Maybe move a little bit to the side. Um, so then vintage. 
wonder and dream. So I want to add these and then I thought of having a strip of Tim Holtz washi at the bottom to ground the to ground the flashcards. Mm, but what washi do I want to use? So this has some green in it. Um, do I like this? It's very numbered. Maybe I want to have a little bit of a wider washi. Maybe this one. Let's see. Ooh. I do really like this one. I do think it matches. What other ones do I have that are this wide? I also have this one. Which is pretty wide. I also really like this one. Now I'm thinking about matching them up with the envelopes. So of course I, d I know I don't have any purple because well purple is not very popular um, in vintage colors, <laughs> right? Um, but I maybe can match up some colors with other ones. I also really like this one though. Hmm, difficult, very, very difficult, but maybe not this one because this has red inside. Or I'm going to use the same one and then I will, okay, I already know, I will stick to this one. I want to, I have this button on my onesie and it flips open and my mic is here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use this one and I'm going to rip a different kind of edge because it was a little bit too neat for what I'm going to do and I am just going to stick it on the bottom as something to ground my card on which I very much like so let's do that for all of them um, I have to see if I want to add washi to the back side. But we will see that once I get there. Yes, wonder. And then... Like this. Okay. So I added the washi. Then do I also want to add some washi on top? Or don't I want to do that? Maybe also a little bit of extra stamping here on the top. Simply because I feel stamping will get lost on this one. So. Maybe I want to add a little bit more on all of them. Just on the top. This one. And this one. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy. So we have these ready. Now, I also want to do a bit of collage, of course, and I thought about adding a label. Now, I don't have purple labels, but I do have um, blue, green, red, and of course neutral colored. So if I take a red and we take a blue for this one and two greens 
or yeah or should we stick it to the neutrals maybe change plan maybe i should first pick out what i wanted to add next to it so i thought about what i wanted to add next to this card as my little focal point thingy because we're going a little bit of a natural nature route i thought i would um, take out these plant illustrations that i fussy cut from a book about house plants <laughs> so these are all house plants and uh, they are most of them are in a pot <laughs> so yeah i i i thought uh, that would be fun oh this is a purple one is it too big yeah oh this is a shame it's too big so i need purple blue red and green so let's see i actually like that one or do i prefer no i like that one blue then we have a purple and we need reds let's see if i can find some red probably oh this is perfect for the green one and i also needed yellow so this one maybe for the yellow so now we have wait <laughs> i need red one <laughs> I almost forgot what I needed. Oh, uh, I know this is a Christmas plant, but it's red. <laughs> so you can use it however you want. I don't know, do I have another red house plant in here? I have no idea. I just cut these up. Um, oh yeah, but this is a really small one. Uh, I cut these up there, they were double-sided and I just made, made a choice <laughs> because, well, um, I, 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 yeah, it was too difficult. And otherwise I will never use these because I have tons of books and they're just standing here in my cabinets and I forget I have these images. So I, oh yes, maybe this is better because, well, that's very Christmas plenty. Um, do I like these? Yeah. I think I do. Yes, I love them. Uh, yeah, what I want to say is I cut them up, but unfortunately it, it was double-sided. So I had to choose which I was more likely to go into use or would like on a project. Um, and uh, it was hard, but I did it. Because I know otherwise I will probably never use them or hoard them or think uh, I need to have the perfect project for them. And, well, the perfect project will never come. You think it will, but it never will. And um, I think it is a shame if I don't use what I have. Okay, so now I'm going to add these to as my collage. I like this one. Um, what label do I want? Do I want to have something red? Let's try first. Do I want to? Or behind it? Maybe I want something behind it and maybe a second one. So we have a red one. And then we go to the blue ones and I'm going to use a blue one for the purple because well I don't have purple and I'm going to use a green one for the green oh I need a different kind of label I need this kind of label so a green one and then in this neutral ones, I have also some labels that look more less brown, more yellowish. So if I can 
find one of those. Um, I can add that instead of two brown ones. Then I have to find it. <laughs> and I hope I can find somewhat of the same type with the same kind of border. I'm going to take this one. Yell yellowish. And then I need a very brown one behind this or something else. I want to have, have this. I do like that. So then, if we put this one down, can we have something else like that? Mm -hmm. No, it needs to be bigger. This is the hard part. I find these la finding labels the hardest part because I have a certain look in mind and if that doesn't <laughs> come across how I want it to. Oh, now it's funny. This is greetings friend. Okay, that's funny. I will keep that. <laughs> um, then I will keep on looking, of course, for more labels. And sometimes... <laughs> um, keep that one. Makes that I spend an hour finding the perfect label. Okay, I'm going to take this one. So I've kind of the same ones. Okay, I'm actually really, really liking this. So I have these labels. Do, does it need anything else? Uh, let me think about that. Just need some stamping or anything else. Yeah, I think it needs some stamping later on. Maybe, or maybe now I have moths. I also have the butterflies, but are these too big for what I want? I mean, maybe I want to have a moth. I haven't used this one, this stamp set yet, so let's open it up. It also has these very cool logo thingies here. But I do think I want to have this one. Oh no! There's a stamp. I think I need to get some folders for these to put them in. So these stamps don't fall out in my basket. I think I want to add a circle thingy here. Maybe this one. I think this one. But first, do we want to add a moth? Let's see. Do I... I like this one. And then I would stamp it in in black. I want that underneath all of these labels. And then I think I would like that. Um, but do I want to have that moth? <laughs> I have so many options. <laughs> uh, too many choices. Okay, no, I want to have a little bit of a bigger one with a bigger wings. So I guess I am going for, I'm going for this one. And I'm going to stamp it with black ink. And I'm not going to use my stamping tool. I'm just going to stamp with my little stamping block and then let's hope it will turn out the way I want it to. So let's see how I'm going to line this up. Okay, so I'm going to do two rules from the top. So I'm looking at the text on how I want to line it up. Two rules from up and a little bit. Okay. Because of course I need to move everything. Should I do a test stamp first? Because it's the first time I'm using it. Let's do a test stamp. Oh yes. 
I do love it. Okay, I think it will look great. So yeah, I counted two rows of text and a little bit on the inside. And that is where I want to line it up. And um, that is how I'm going to do it. And I know you should do your ink pad on your stamp, but sometimes you know I'm a little bit lazy. Stamp, stamp, stamp. Yes, perfect. Okay, also going to do that on the top one. Sometimes I like to do these things all at once and sometimes I like to uh, do it in a... I have to move this a little bit to, towards me because I cannot see properly on top. Oh, otherwise you will see my head. I don't know. You probably already see my head, but you know, I will try to avoid it as much as possible. Um, yeah, sometimes I like to do this, um, well, quote unquote assembly line thing. And sometimes I don't in this, with this particular project, because I am pretty much creating four of the same, but in different colors. I like to do this at once because, well, first of all, I already have this stamp out now and I know I want to use it again. So why not stamp all of these moths at once? Second of all, um, it's a lot faster and it helps me to have some time to think about my next step. So I have my little moth. Now let's start with this one because it's already... Let's see. Do and then I wanted to have this one here. And this one on top. Now I can also move it a little bit. This a little bit more down. Oh yes, I like this. Um, maybe move my plants a little bit more down and a little bit more to the corner. I don't mind it overlapping the D because you can still read it says dream. But I like this and I think I can do a, li a little bit more stamping here and on some other places, but this is how I'm going to do it. So I will assemble this first one with you and then I will assemble the others, well, you know, off camera because you don't have to watch me do that. But how I'm going to assemble this, first of all, I am going to do some distress oxide on this card. Uh, it's a little bit a shiny, shiny card, but I guess it's Tim Holtz, so probably it will take Distress Oxide very nicely. Otherwise, I already have some brown fingers, so it doesn't really matter. I will ink up the card and then I am going to assemble everything. Um, I'm going to assemble this with a glue stick. This horrible glue stick. And then this card I'm going to stick down with, with another glue because it's a little bit thicker. But I know the... I'm going to add glue here first. I know um, these will stick. So let's see. If I'm a little bit wary, I haven't slept a lot this night because... Uh, well, it was quite late when I went into bed because I had fun editing my video and then um, Link had a epileptic seizure in my bed a couple of hours ago. So that made that I have slept for three hours or three hours and a bit. And we have to watch him after he had a seizure because he um, is like kind of drunk <laughs> afterwards and motor his motoric stuff is very, very, well, how do I say that? Disturbed. So he, he, he's like a, a drunk person, but a cat who doesn't understand what is happening. So he jumps on tables and then when he tries to jump off, he can hurt himself. So that is why I had to stay awake after his... Attack. The attack itself doesn't take a long time. It's more the um, aftermath <laughs> of the attack. So if I'm a little bit worried or wary or 
talking into myself or um, anything like that or you know you can't follow me properly you know why uh, it's because <laughs> I haven't slept a lot uh, but yeah it, it well it it does help with making videos because I was very excited after yesterday I filmed yesterday my first video again being back and now I today it's Sunday and I am super excited to film this video with you uh, I don't know I'm I'm having a lot of fun and um, now I have had some extra time because well um, I couldn't sleep anymore Link is okay now He's fine. It usually takes about two hours and then he is um, good enough again to be left alone. And he will sleep because of course it's also very tiring to have an epileptic seizure. Now, I will... I have stuck these down. I will stick down this plant. Like I said, I don't care... If it is overlapping the D, I will use this glue stick and find a good spot for it. I love it. And then I'm going to snip off this bit. Oh, I'm so enjoying myself. I don't know. I'm having so much fun creating videos like this and creating with you. I never had this much fun. I thought always thought about the real time. What do I do? And can I talk? And it takes so much time. And now because I don't worry about time, I'm just I'm just doing and I'm having so much fun. So I I am going to stamp now on here. I'm going to use do I want to use this one or the other the smaller one. No, I do think I want to use this one going to stamp it over there and do I want to add a number or I know there's already a number but I don't care <laughs> oh I will say uh, the name of remitter I think that would be cool because it has a word and then it's like the name of the remitter is dream yes okay this is what I'm going to do um, don't forget to put the cap on your glue stick either. Yes. Okay, I'm super excited about this. Uh, probably have to leave this to dry because this is um, another kind of, you know, plasticky, glossy cardstock. So I'm going to stamp this one here. I hope I didn't move it. Otherwise, well. I moved it a little bit. <laughs> it is what it is, right? I'm not going to worry about these things anymore. And then I will take the name of Remitter. And we'll stamp that here. Perfect. Do we like it? Is it finished? Maybe we need something else down here, by the way. So what do we need? We need this number. I haven't used this one before, so this number looks very cool. Put it here on the... Oh no. Yes, I moved it. I don't care. It adds to the vintage look, right? So this is it for now. If I think of something while I'm, I'm creating the others, of course, I will share with you. But this is how I'm going to assemble all of them now. And uh, after I did that, I will be back and share with you how we are going to continue this envelope decorating. So I finished these envelopes and I, or the front side, I am loving this. I don't think it need, needs anything else. I am very, very happy with this. So let's continue on the back because I also had a plan for that. I hope this is dry. I, I don't know if it is uh, because it's on this plasticky stuff. Um, but this one is the one we made together. So let's take a chance on this one. 
I made um, a snippet roll a few days back before I started filming. I was surprised. I didn't know I would like this as much, but I, I actually do. And I thought it would be fun to add a piece of that snippet roll to this flap. Um, yeah, so I thought if I would do that, that would look very cool. And um, so this is the first one, first time I made a, a snippet roll with masking tape and some leftovers from the masterboards that I was making. And uh, yeah, I actually really liked it. So I think maybe I will do more of these. I'm not sure. So yeah, I'm going to add this to the flap of the envelope. And then I was thinking about what to add here, but I'm not quite sure yet because I would like like to have something there. Do we want to have the snippet roll here? And then something else on the flap. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Because if we open this up, it looks like this. If I put it over here. Okay, I have to do a little thing. I do definitely want to use the snippet roll. That is for sure. But if I want to put it under or on top of the flap, I am not so sure yet. Because I don't know what else I would like to use. Okay, so this, to be honest with you, this took me forever. This uh, <laughs> deciding what I wanted to do took me forever. Uh, yeah, so but I have decided. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the snippet strip. Put it on the flap and then I'm going to take a label in the color from the envelope. So this is, this is the green one under here. And I'm going to stamp these. That is what I'm going to do for all of them. So let's do that. I will take my glue. So I have these tacky, tacky glue. Um, it's okay. It's not my favorite glue. But it's a pretty good glue. It sometimes warps my paper. It sometimes doesn't. And sometimes I just don't <laughs> really care. Um, but what I don't like about it is that when, if you put it upright, uh, you have to squeeze and shake it a long time before the glue comes out. And I really, really don't like that. So what I do is I have this cup that I used, use for paint or paint water and I just store it in here upside down. And that way my glue is always <laughs> running because I really don't like it that I have to shake it first. I purposely also didn't use any distress ink or anything on this because I think the snippet strip has a charm on its own like this. Okay, first we are going to stick down this label about there. Taking the glue stick. Oh, I so hope that this glue stick is so finished soon because I really don't like it but you already know that okay so I'm putting this label here I guess was it here yes it was here or something here do you have the same that sometimes you get so caught up on the perfect placement that you keep moving it for a few millimeters <laughs> and then you know, what, what's the point of moving it over a few millimeters, but it's finding the right spot and it can take you, well, so long to find the actual right spot. I'm going to take a bigger stamping block because this stamp is a bit bigger. So let's first stamp this one. It is from the Field Notes set. So I'm going to stamp this one first, um, this way Kira, and I want it here, kind of pressing it, perfect, I love it, then we will take the number, also from the field note set, and I want to have the number over here, also perfect. 
And then I wanted to have this moth. It's the same that I used on the front side. Um, but I want to have it partially there. So let's see if I can make that work. I'll take my nail paper. Also, I used these papers again in masterboards <laughs> because there's color and stuff on there uh, or in mixed media projects. So I never throw these out. Um, I keep all of them. Yes. Perfect. Do I want something here? Maybe I do want a tiny label over there. Because it does look empty. But I don't want a... I have these. I don't want a green colored one. Do I want to have this over there? Do I like that? I think I do. And I have enough of these. Yes, I'm going to stick that down. Because that spot is just a little bit too open for me. I'm going to add that here. Usually I would flip it around, but with this, uh, because I already finished the collage on front, I'm just going to cut this excess piece off. And now I'm going to take little bit more one stain here on the edge and I think it is perfect so this is the envelope on the back side I think I'm very happy with this so I'm going to uh, finish up all the others and then I will show you the end result I have finished the envelope, so I'm just going to share with you the end result. And then that is the end of the video. I will also put them in the pocket so you can see how that looks. Uh, so this is the front of this one, and then this is on the back. You can open up the envelope, of course. I probably will put the letter inside. Then we have this one with the yellow. And then this is the back. Uh, we have the blue one, which is for the purple pocket that I have created. And this is the back. Absolutely love the snippet strip. I uh, am very happy with this. I didn't know uh, what else to do with the <laughs> snippet strip. So because I used a little bit before and I was like, when I'm going to use it again, I will show you. I uh, used it in my junk journal. Uh, so I created this um, junk journal page. I will zoom you out a little bit. So that is what I did with the snippet strip. This was a tiny one that I created. And I had so much fun creating it, but I thought, well, how am I going to use this in other projects? Um, I don't know, I'm just going to create it. And that shows that you don't always have to know what you're going to make with something. Because, well, now it is on the flap of an envelope. And maybe next time I... <laughs> We'll put it somewhere else, but I also really liked it here on the side of the page. So that was my junk journal. Uh, yeah, so these are the, are the four envelopes. And um, now I can add them to their pockets. So I have added uh, on the back of these pockets my logo sticker because I'm going to send these out as snail mail. Of course, you don't have to do so. Um, so let's see. This green one will go into the green one. And do I want to have the plant on top or not? I do think so. Um, let's see. Then we have the blue one. Then I guess I would like to have it like this. Let's try if you only see. I don't know, it makes it less fun to look at if you only have the letters and labels. I don't know. The plant makes it all look a bit more fun. Then we have the red one. I don't know, it has this thing with plants. They always make everything look fun and enjoyable. 
Then the yellow one. So this is how they will go in. And then um, they look like this on the back. I um, am going to, well, find other stuff to put in here. And I am also uh, going to share more projects where I continue this snail wheel project where I make ephemera because in a sense, in, in essence, I'm creating ephemera that you can also use in your drunk journal because really it's just an envelope and a pocket. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video <laughs> and um, yeah, if you did, leave me a thumbs up, you know, like, subscribe, all those things. And uh, then I will probably see you uh, next time. Bye.